Welcome back to the Sunday Roast. Actually, the Monday Roast us because we carried on like pork chops at the MCG yesterday. So it is Monday night. We're still getting it in. We're, we're covering round eight. Started on Friday night. Carlton versus Brisbane. You were there. The Blues lose by 26 points to the Lions, who aren't that good usually outside of uh, outside of Queensland. Lincoln McCarthy kicks the first. Das, what happened here? Jeff. Jeff, 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 Jeff. Tell you what, another big game. Another big fucking disappointment, Jeff. I'll tell you what, all Carlton are doing are filling the stat sheet. How about we fill the fucking scoreboard, Jeff? Because I'll tell you what, we're not doing it. We had more inside 50s, Jeff. 40 to 7 for to 47 as we at guys actually go in plus 57 in disposals plus 25 in contested ball four less turnovers 60 plus handballs jeb we have a better disposal efficiency and once again jeb we cannot kick a score nick newman jeb he had a good little run there yeah we're pretty happy with him he went on stangle didn't do too much toby green look he played him pretty well and then rankin jeb he had charlie cameron on the weekend and got taken to the absolute furnace cooked he got turned inside <clears throat> more times than a reversible bomber jacket jeb josh honey in the side, Jeb, for some forward pressure, some forward craft. Have you guess what he had in the first half? What? One point, Jeb. <laughs> one disposal, and he absolutely cooked half of the team. He's not in the team, Jeb. He will 100% be getting delisted. Harry Mackay's defense, Jeb, is so, so his confidence is that low. I reckon if he had a free hit in 2020, he still wouldn't have a swing at it. That's how unconfident this player is. Our third best player on the ground was Matt Kennedy, Jeb, and he was the sub. He was the sub, 13 disposals, three clearances, and a snag. I don't know what he's doing on the bench, Jeb, but I'll tell you what, he's starting in our midfield every single game from now on. And I'll tell you what needs to happen, Jeb. Vossi needs to go into a quiet room with about 10 mirrors and have a good fucking hard look at himself. I'll tell you what, we are as weak as water. This is what needs to happen, Jeb. Kennedy needs to start in the midfield. Harry, Harry McKay needs to play up the ground and get nowhere near a goal. And he also needs to get a kicking coach in so he can actually get some fucking confidence back. Weedering Jeff, not only does he need a new bank account, he needs a new lease on life. Ever since he got stripped of all that money, he cannot kick a footy. And Jeff, this is what actually needs to happen. I'm telling you, take the captaincy off Cripper. I love him. But I'm telling you what, it's wearing him down. You can see as soon as he gets off his guard, he's only had a couple of good games. He drops his head and it looks like everything is such an effort. It's been years and years and years. We need to give it off to Sammy Walsh. Let Cripper play with freedom. Take the captaincy off. And it looks like it's way too much for him. And you know what I hate, Jeff? The fact that Adam Chera, I was actually going to wrap him up tonight and say how good he's been the last few games. Him coming out saying that if we don't make finals, it's still a good year. It is fucking not. It's been like two decades. What else are we fucking playing for, Jeb? I'm fucking disgusted. I've had enough of it. Shit game. We left early. Fuck. This is this is what you pay your money for, to go to the footy, and it's bullshit. Every year, Jeb, they say we're coming since 2008. I'm sick of it. It's fucked. It's fucked. They were talking, I heard a lot on the radio today. So, first of all, teams can stop Carlton's game plan too easily. Like, yeah. if, you start, if you keep Crips quiet, all of a sudden, you're not getting clearances you know, you, they. I don't know if you got your system right. That no, might be coaching. System. But you look, you know, like you look at Geelong. If Dane just having a shocker, they're still beating you. They're still all the other guys are still getting you. Or you know, Melbourne sometimes try and tag Clary, but then Viney and Petrarca are going to get you. Looks like you guys can't stop a team system, and teams do whatever they want on you. And then if they stop you, they get it done basically. I'll tell you what, Jeb. I know we've been a revolving door of coaches. If we don't make finals this year, Vossi's on the hot seat. If we keep playing like we do, he's on the hot seat. You know what we look like? A terrible under-12 side. We kick it out from fullback to the back pocket, let everyone push across and just kick it down the line constantly. I'm not sure if you watch Friday Night, Jeb. It is one of the most boringest brands of football, and the place was humming. It had so many people, and everyone was just – everyone wanted to get up and about, but there was nothing to cheer about. Brisbane fucking absolutely ran through us. And we had more of the footy. It's just, it's fucking so disappointing, Jeb. And we uh, we spoke about it yesterday being at the ground. Like, Harry Mackay should be a 50 times better football than Brody Majacek. With his pedigree, he's just a height, skill, talent, all this. But when it just comes to being a footballer, how much better of a footballer is Brody Majacek than Harry McCoy? Brody Majacek has played the one for like four years and he should be a three. Yeah. Mate, he's unbelievable. I, I love him. He's, he's just effort. He's, he's intensity. Crack. He's courageous. Yeah. He's a team player. Kick, kick right. five yesterday. Kicks him when he has to. Like, yeah. Anyway. Oh, anything I'm- else on the Blues? 
Mate, I'm telling you, strip strip Crip up, fuck our whole team up. I'm seriously, I'm sick of it, Jeff. Well, I'm going this Saturday as well. I'm fucking. Yeah, I'm coming. Yeah, we're going. We're going on Saturday. Oh, it's going to be a good Pont and Pally. Oh, boy. The Blues would want to come out to play. Mate, if we lose this, we lose to Collingwood the next week. Then we got Melbourne Essendon. We're not playing finals. Season over nearly. Fuck. We're not playing finals. I'm Jesus. putting my membership in the microwave. <laughs> and hard rubbish, you reckon? Oh, fuck. Next game, Jeff. Next game. Richmond West Coast in was probably the most least watched game of the season. Richmond beat West Coast by 46 points at the MCG, which basically everyone predicted. What was this? 145 Saturday, Arvo. I was playing in the lunchtime league, so I didn't see too much of this dust. You you probably didn't watch too much. I know Petra Charlie kicked the first at 23 to 1. Anything you saw in this game? Uh, well, I was actually going down watching you, Jeb. I'd much rather talk about you because you put it on absolute clinic. 15 touches in the first half, Jeb. You could add about 17 because you didn't actually play on from the square. That's a rookie mistake, Jeb. You haven't been playing footy for a while, but you've got to get outside the square to get those extra touches. But no, West Coast actually gave it to them, Jeb. They were only three goals down at uh, three-quarter time, and then um, they obviously kicked away in the end, uh, did the Tigers, but all their good players at the end sort of filled their boots. Shy Bolton's been a bit under um, form, but he had he had 30 disposals and three goals, Jeb. One of the better games for the season, and like that's the sort of pyramid stuff. But Tim Taranto, Jeb, I know he's been copying a lot, but I'll tell you what. If you're a betting man like ourselves, he has absolutely filled the stat sheet this year. He's pretty much getting 30 every game. And obviously, he filled his boots with two goals as well. But Hopper played really well. Um, yeah, Tigers just got it done as you'd expect. Yeah, I'm looking now. So, Taranto paid 570 for two. Shy Bolt was 275 for two. So, that would have been nice. And then touches, you could get big Oscar Allen, my man. He kicked four. He was paid he 775 for four. Why is he paying so much? 775, and then what? So Shy had 31, so you could get, wow, he was Did you 11, even get him? 1150 for 30. Jeez, that's nice. But who would, fuck, I would never back him. Yeah, exactly. Him. He hasn't that's shown cool. the form yet. That's great. Yeah, wasn't much of a game. Jeez, the uh, Richmond supporters are confident. Only 8,000 people are saying at the G when they were filling out 100,000 when they're playing finals. Is that how many they had? Oh, I, I just heard saying like there's only 8,000 people there or something. Wow. Probably it was more than that. Yeah, it has to be. Mate, terrible game. Next one. Sure, okay, next game. Down to the Cattery. Geelong beat the Crows by 26 points. Not sure who kicked the first. Going to look it up right now. Big Texan. That big Texan kicked the first. Uh, I did see a bit of this game, in and out of this game. This is on the big screen of the footy cop, so I was having a bit of a look. What did you see, Adobe? Mate, I just saw when I went on, because I was sort of flicking between this. It just, I thought um, Crows would have been a little bit closer in this match. They sort of just, um, uh, the Cats sort of just held them at bay for a while. Like, they, you never really thought they were in too much damage, and then it got down towards the end, and... Um, um, yeah, they just they just ran away with it at the end, Cats. They're fucking good at home, aren't they? Dangerfield obviously only played pretty much a half and then went off with a precautionary um, hamstring. So hopefully he's back and it's he doesn't have to do one of those mini pre-seasons like he did last year. But Jeb, Jeremy Cameron just kicks his three. Um, how good of an inclusion is Sam Simpson back in the side? He's pretty yes. much kicked two every every time he's been back in the side. They just It's a football factory in Geelong, Jeb, and it's frustrating. Players come out, new players come in, and they step up. It's just, oh, they're just... Fucking so far in front of the Blues. Just, just, they're just, like, it's, it's a well-built club, isn't it? They're they're just, you one, go on. one in, one out. But you know who else has been good, Jeb? Peddler. I know he didn't get much of it. He kicked two goals. He gets a couple shots on goal every week. I really need to start looking into that market a little bit more. But, Jeb, the Cats are just rolling. Like we said, never never to worry about them. Obviously, they started the year zipping three, but they are just fucking rolling. Yeah, from what I saw from this game, so... Adelaide did have a bit of an early lead, only by a couple of goals. They got up, then Geelong got up by about 20 to 25 points, and it just stayed like that the whole game. It was just goal for goal the whole game. Geelong couldn't get into, like, single figures, and then – but uh, sorry, Adelaide couldn't get it to, like, a single-figure margin. Geelong weren't, weren't putting it to, like, 40 points. It just stayed goal for goal, about that 25 points. And that's what it ended. Probably wasn't a good game for the putters. No highlights here. So Jeremy Cameron kicked three. Because what he paid for three to us. Oh, fucking like a dollar twenty or something? A dollar thirty for three, which is just unbelievable. 
Isaac Reagan kicked two, which was nice. He paid he paid two dollars eighteen for two. That would have been a right. Tex kicked three as well. He paid four twenty for three. Not too bad down in the category. And then the disposal, the only one to make any money off would have been uh Jordan Dawson for twenty five. Fuck it was dollar fifty four. I actually wanted this in the hundred k, but didn't get in there. You should go. Jebby, buddy, danger didn't get his twenty. Don't know if that got uh, avoided or not. Uh, mate, this, this is where the struggle is. Like, you just look at Adelaide. You need everyone to contribute. Riley Philthorpe only had the five touches. Rochelle only had eight and didn't have a shot on goal. Yeah, a shocker. On, out in front. Um, Pedler, like, same thing. Two goals, but only the eight touches. Mitch Hins, Jev, he actually had 14 in a snag, the big fella. Oh, and then Darcy Fogarty. That was Fogarty, a nice goal he kicked, too. Darcy Fogarty as well, Jev. Only the nine disposals. Nine no touches. Goal. Ben Keys is too much up and down. He only had the 12. It just looked like they got a little bit lost there, Jev. Yeah, I'm, and looking at the AFL ranking points on the actual app, it's like te- it's like eight out of ten crows are on the bottom of it. Like Geelong, just way better twenty two out there, better contributors, just get it done down at the counter. I can't see them losing there ever. Now the next game, probably the game of the round. Yeah, probably definitely the game of the round. Suns Melbourne at Heritage Bank or the Nightmare at Metricon, four forty Saturday Arvo. Melbourne win by five points, Darth. I'm pretty sure Cozzy Pickett kicked the first, my guy. He did. Um, our mate, the Shark, Matt Dickey was there with his wife. Yes. Uh, what did you see, Dave? Mate, I saw an absolute cracking contest. Now, we did say on hook, line, and single, I thought that the, the Suns were going to keep it close, um, which they did. Obviously, you took Melbourne, Jev, uh, at plus half a point. So both of the bets still got up, but... Fuck, they are a different side when they play up there. And, Jeff, the last two weeks, I was going to wrap him up in our in our group chat, but he missed the goal at the end. But Darcy McPherson's had a great last two weeks. He's got, like, over 28 disposals in both games. So I, don't, I know he's been, like, sort of in and out of the side, so back into it. But, like, guys like Fiorini that's sort of in and out of the side had 24 touches. Uh, Swallow's still hanging about with 25 disposals. Can't believe he's still in the side. He's just – he felt like he's been playing forever. Um, But – Fuck, they just they just surged at the very end. I thought the umpire was <laughs> dog shit. I thought it was so bad, like leaning towards Melbourne favour. But good sides just win, Jeff. But Noah Anderson, Jeff, I'll let you talk about him because I was watching and I was about to message him. I'm like, mate, he's on the period. Like, he's in. He has to be. He's His last month has been out of this world. He's, he's kicking a goal every game and he's getting around 30 disposals, probably about eight to nine clearances as well. Yeah. So he's had 37 and one. I'm going to look at him as he's at his advanced stats as well. 81 to spend. Uh, 10 clearances. So they were talking about Matt Rao and Noah Anderson. I heard David King say he hum- they humbled Petrarca and Oliver. They just went toe-to-toe and humbled them. They did well. 21 clearances, four inside 50s, uh, seven score involvements, three direct goal assists, five center clearances to go with 37 and a goal. Ten like, for the game he had. That is an unbelievable game. If that was a Nick Dacos game, it would be Terrific. everywhere on Fox Footy and stuff. Like he was that is an unbelievable game. Max Gorn, two goals, fifteen touches. He's he's just back, isn't he, Dust? He's ready to oh. go. Rosas the four. Your man, Ben yeah, King two. He's good. McPherson thirty. Clary twenty eight. Petrarca twenty six. So Clary not getting 30 hurts the 100K. Yeah, so. Mate, I'll tell you what. Did you see the video I tagged you of Matt Rowell eating the grass? <laughs> is How that, good was it? Is that the funniest thing? Oh, my God. I was like, he's not going to eat it, is he? And or like, I thought he was going to spit it out. Nah, he's just eating it. He's eating is, it. Is it because he's a bull? Himself. He loves it. Mate, he's. <laughs> I actually. But surely he knows he's like, the cameras are on. I've. That is one of the best things I've ever seen. He must just be a fucking unit. Funny you say that. When we went to the corner last night for a couple of beers after the footy, and we were pretty pissed, I the bounce was on live. I watched that live and thought I was winging it. I'm like, how'd they get rally to eat grass like that? Thought it was like a skit or something. And then when I woke up this morning, checked Instagram, and everyone's posting about it, having a laugh, I'm like, oh, he just does it to ground himself or something. What a legend. What the fuck is that? Just patting down the grass and just eat some. I'm, I'm going to start doing that. 
All right, next game. GWS Bulldogs. The Dogs get it done at Monica Oval by 15 points. It was a battle of two big dog heavyweight midfielders. No Toby Green. Bit of a laid out. Always hurts. Das, did you see much of this game? Mate, I didn't see anything. I saw the back of my eyelids. I had an early night. But I did go back and watch some of the highlights, Jeff. And I'll tell you what, without Toby Green, they just... They are a different side, the Giants, when a much better side when he's in it. But I'll tell you what, GWS, they're, they're probably like, what, an 11th, 12th ranked side. But they're one of the best 12th, 11th, 12th ranked sides in the AFL. They can push any side. They can they, go with they're anyone. They're fucking competitive. Yes, they're not winning as many games as they'd probably like. But I'll tell you what, Jeff, they really fucking have a good crack. Now, Luke Jackson, Jeff, he's he's actually quite short for this. Two goals, he's only 280. It's because he's kicked one or two goals. Yeah. GWS dogs. Oh, sorry, sorry, wrong game. Wrong game. Yeah, you're so, right. Um, Tom Green, Jeb, have you guess how much he paid for 35? Uh, I've got it here as well, but I'll go three bucks ten. 285. 285. I'm looking here. You can only get him for one goal. He paid 430 for the one. Then he paid 41 to one to kick the first. Imagine you had him. What's that? Oh, I'm going to do the math. 41 times four bucks 30 for one. Was he? Yep. 4.3. And then what was he for uh, 35? 2.85. 2.85. You would have got 500 to 1 for Tom Green's game. Jeez, yeah, that would have been nice. I was looking for him for 3, but you couldn't get it. And Jeff, a couple others for 30. Josh Kelly was 2.40. Bailey Smith was 4.25. Bond was 4.25. And Lockie Whitfield was 5.50. Now, also, if you are a um, Doggies fan, a good one to get on, Arthur Jones. Now, I've been watching him, Jeff. I thought he probably should have been dropped a few times because he's. Played about eight to uh, probably what I think eight to nine games now in his career. Only kicked his first goal last week, and but kicked two on the weekend. Jeff at seven bucks, but I know the doggies fans rate him. I don't <laughs> saying they probably go out and kick five against us this weekend on Nick Newman. He'll watch yeah, the team from Bailey Cameron and just turn him inside out. Good to see Bailey Smith get thirty again. We were sort of worrying about him just for twenty. Hopefully he's fit, mentally right. He's a bloody good footballer, Bailey Smith. So thirty, and then Marcus Bond and Pally's game to us. One goal, 32 touches, and then you go look at advanced stats. So you go clearances. So Cornelio Kelly had five clearances each. Liver Tom Green had eight clearances each. Bonton Pally had 14 clearances, seven inside 50s, seven score involvements, four center clearances, 560 meters gained to go with his, what did he have? What did I say? He had 30, 30 and one. Another three round low votes. I reckon is he had nine he's nearly had twelve in the last five, six yeah. weeks. I reckon he's had four best ons in yeah. six weeks. He, and he's, and I he's and, on his and, every game apart from oh, his two hundred. He's on he is in form. What a gun. He he'd be winning the brown though for sure. It's it's hard to, everyone says he because he got perfect ten coach votes today, so his game just stood out. Tom Green, three goals, one and thirty eight. That is a bloody good game to get two votes on. That's oh. one of his best games either. Tell you what, right. Tom Green, I was thinking about him today. So he's like your Marcus Bond and Pally type. Like, see, he's an enormous midfielder. He's your Pat Cripps. He's this and that. Now, this could be an enormous call. I watch the Swans get bullied around the footy. I would nearly rather a Tom Green at the Swans than a Nick Dacos at the Swans. I think I, I know I can be harsh on Dacos. We've got Blakey. We've yeah, got yeah, Dacos. Is that we've for what got, we've got some oh, some good halfbackers. They're not Dacos level. But if I was if I had to pick one of them at the Swans, I'd take Tom Green. I want that big body midfielder. Yeah, you guys, are fucking, you guys are lacking. Like you got like row bottom and stuff in there. He's just they're just not those contested balls. Yeah. Like that's what you need. You need someone that's just going to get in the trenches. Fucking well. like get those clearances and just fucking fish it out. Yeah, fuck. That's a good game. 38 and 3 in a loss. And they came, GWS. They were down by like 30 points and they came, but they just couldn't get there. Tsunami. Next game. I did not see a second of this game. Freo Hawthorne. Freo by 69 points. Dinner for two points. Cost us in our here comes the money. Um, is this your only losing leg? I looked at one before. This is my only losing leg. I owed Hawthorne plus 55 and a half. Yeah. Freo get it done. They absolutely smash them. 
Uh, Jeb, yeah. Michael Alter's first snag, 11.50. Sorry, this is where my eyes went to before. But Luke Jackson, Jeb, two goals at 280. Now, Andrew, Andy Brayshaw, this is pretty much two weeks in a row. So Andy Brayshaw backers will be loving this. So for two goals, Jeb, he's at 675. And for 30 touches, 220. Uh, for three snags, Jai Miss was six bucks, and also Michael Frederick was six dollars as well. They ran away with it. I thought the Hawks were going to put up a little bit more of a fight, but obviously uh, we're resting a few players before the game, which is a a very tactical um, tanking job, I believe the Hawks are doing uh, in admission to try and get Harley Reid. But Jeff Frio just finally showing a little bit. The Hawks have put the cue in the rack, Jeff. It is. Uh, I did not watch a second of this game. I know Mitch Lewis kicked two, which I was very happy with, but. Apart from that, Jeff, I did not want to hurt my eyeballs with, with this. I was happy to see Andrew Brayshaw back playing fucking good footy, back 30 and 2. Like, he is one of the best midfielders in the comp. Like, last year, his season last year was unbelievable. So, it's good to see him back. Luke Jackson got the perfect 10 coaches' votes, I noticed today. So, he must have been very good to get 10 over Brayshaw. Brayshaw got 8. So, they must have been the two clear standout best ons. He started slow, but he's fine. He's kicking a lot more goals now, Luke Jackson. He is. Why are we starting yes. to get into it? So wrong. You were telling me he had five touches in the first 10 seconds and then he had a shocker after that. Didn't get near it. Didn't get apparently. near it. Yeah. Not much of a game. To, I don't think that was much of a game. Five came back, kicked a goal. Didn't look that great. Everyone's They put his goal on Instagram. It's like, come on, he's a two-time Brownlee medalist. He can put better than a goal on Instagram. So not much to report there, Dars. Next game, Jeff. Port Next and- game. Port versus... Essendon, we were at the pub watching this before the game. We go, if you want a first goal scorer, go get on Todd Marshall because he will be on Zerk Thatcher, our boy. But Kyle Langford kicks the first. Port win by five points. So we didn't see the end of this game because we were at the footy, which is another problem. That's another thing the AFL should worry about, getting that game done, then starting the Swans game, then starting the other game. On the big screen. Um, But... Yeah, Port by five points. We had a couple of Essendon supporters message us that they got absolutely robbed in the last quarter. Um, yeah, what do you remember seeing in this game? Well, I remember I was just watching where Zerk Thatcher was and he, he had his head down a little bit. He was actually on Rioli at one stage. Jeff Rioli kicked a couple. Um, <laughs> but Jeff, Jakey Stringer, he's been in a pretty good patch. He had 18 and two by the looks of things. Archie Perkins, Jeff, I know he looks like one of those guys, I just feel that he's not going to kick goals but does. He yeah. just keeps popping up and kicking goals. Cole Langford, Jeb, he seems to be um, kicking goals, obviously, here and there. But the Port big forwards should have fired a bit more of a shot. Charlie Dixon had 2-2. Darcy Byrne-Jones has been good up for Jeb, 2-1. Finn Layson, 1 goal, 4. Um, Sam Powell Pepper, 1-1. One, one. He's been pretty good up for this year. But um, it looks like that uh, Port probably should have run with that, uh, run away with it a little bit easier. But how the fuck is McDonald Tip and Woody still playing? <laughs> what do you reckon his 2K time is? 10 oh. minutes? I heard a rumour that he's never run more than 1K at a time. Oh, he shit. can't run a 1K, apparently. <laughs> I heard, my hairdresser told me that. He goes, he can't run a kilometre at a time. He's just efforts. Oh, he's a bomber supporter, isn't he? Timmy? Yeah, he's a good man. Yeah, that's good, yeah. So Merritt, one goal, one twenty eight. Parrish had 37. He's a gun. Days. They were the two AFL like fantasy points ranked. Zach Butter's got the perfect 10 coaches votes. He must have been very good. 28 touches. Um, yeah, Parrish had nine clearances, six score involvements, 37 touches. Like, when he's on, he can be a fucking good player. Oh, but, how good? How good seeing Zach Merrick get over 25? Pfft. One thing, yeah. Can't. One thing, we'll talk, one thing we'll talk about in the next game, but Herb Kane Corn say today, so... Apparently, Port's set shot goal kicking was absolutely horrible, right? Mm. And he's like, you're like, that's the one thing a coach up in the coach's box just can't control. Like, bad goal kicking. They yeah. can't do anything about it. It's you're on for the day or you're not. And if Port ended up losing that game, Ken Hinckley gets the blame. He goes back under the pump from the media and stuff. And it's because of poor goal kicking that he just had nothing to do about. And it's like, it's it'd be so frustrating. And I'll tell you, it's. Frustrating because the next game, Collingwood versus the Swans, Sunday 320 at the G. Now, that is one of the best places on earth, 320 Sunday at the G. It was unbelievable there. Collingwood by 29 points in the end. Um, who kicked the first again? Uh, Meyer check kicked the first, I'm pretty sure. No, um, Ash Johnson because Morgs backed him, remember? 
Ash Johnson right. kicked the first. Right. I back Ryan Clark. He kicked the second. Climbing by 29. Das, what did you see? Mate, I saw a very good contest in that first quarter, and I actually love that they went to Dacos, Jeb, and tried to ruffle him up a little bit. The Swans are the sort of side that can do it. You know, They've got a bit of pedigree behind them. They've got those sort of plays that will stand up for one another. A lot of teams won't. Like You'd never see a North Melbourne go after him. They've got, they don't have two legs to stand on. Bo. So I actually really liked that the Swans actually went after and had a crack. Um, but Jev, just a bit of like breaking down in important parts of the game. The hoodoo still holds over you guys at the MCG, missing a few too many shots early, which I'll let you touch on. But fuck the experience heads, like still side bottom, Pendlebury. I can't believe how good they are. Like they are walk up starters in any side. Yeah, they're just and but those two could go to any side and walk up starters in their exact position. Well, like you, you and experience. You can't, you can't say this to many players. Like, sometimes they've had, like, a system. That's why they'd still fit. Those two would walk into any side and start. Yeah. Yeah, they're – yeah, the IQ and stuff is just out of this world. And just their knowledge of the MCG, just everything. They just coach out in the field. Unbelievable players. Um, I thought from quarter time till three-quarter time, I thought the Swans absolutely outplayed the Pies and we were sort of – Oh, we were just playing as well or better than him. But just looking back on it now, I know this is that now. And I just remember yesterday, remember you kept pre-filming my reaction to a set shot and we just kept missing them. Found out today we kicked one goal eight from set shots. We missed eight set shots and a lot of them were gettable. He missed some easy ones. We missed ones, to, Laddams mixed that one directly in front. All these set shots, we could, like that should have been six goals three, say, instead of one goal, eight. All of a sudden, instead of being uh, that game being about a goal at three-quarter time down by five points, we could have been 30 points up. And, yes, we know Colin would have the comeback power. They've ended up winning by 29 points. They kicked two goals in the last minute. My check kicked two in the last minute. So it was more about a 20-point game. But I'm going to say it now, Das. Here we go. Collingwood are not winning the premiership. Oh, here we go. I'm putting it on record. They are not winning the premiership. I do not reckon they are on in the same level as Melbourne, Brisbane, and Geelong. I think they have. I know they're injured. Every team's injured. I think they've got way too many C graders on the field. That at, when they're front running, Craig McRae, he's got them playing like B graders. I reckon in big, big games, there's a couple of blokes that will be found out. Guys like so like. I don't think oh, Ian Hill's that good. Bobby Hill, our man's that good. He got subbed. Yeah, three three touches. Oleg Markov is not that good. Jack Ginevan's not that good. He did pop up, kicked a nice snag. He was a little dangerous. He's not that good. Uh, who else? Hoskin Elliott, Hoskin don't you Elliott's like? a bit of a myth. He's not that good. A myth. <laughs> John Noble's a good player. He was good yesterday. My how good's Nobes? But oh, I don't know. I'm just saying, and then... I'm sick of Collingwood players in my personal uh, sorry supporters in my personal DMs, but in the hundred K DMs, tell me Nick Dacos is the best player in the comp and he should be top of the pyramid. Das, he's not the best player in the whole of the AFL, is he? He is mm. not. So he had twenty five touches yesterday with three kick ins, so we'll call it twenty two. To be fair to him, he had ten in the last quarter when they had to win the game. But that means he was on 12 at three-quarter – uh, sorry, he was on 15 at three-quarter time. Ryan Clark held him well. We got physical with him. He went missing a bit. I do not think – like, he he is a top six player in the comp. I I agree with that. But he it's, isn't – Which is amazing, which is he great. He isn't Clary. He isn't Jeremy Cameron. He isn't Bond and Pally yet. Like, he, he's got a bit to go. He's a good player, but I thought the Swans got him yesterday. We showed we showed a good game plan on how to beat Collingwood on the G. You Did guys a lot of things right. We just missed set shots and how. So now Horse Longmore has to get in front of the fucking camera and someone has to get blamed for the loss. And yes, Buddy Franklin looked old and everything. Some blokes had bad games, but you miss eight set shots and all of a sudden where we've lost. I think we've lost four in a row or three in a row. Mm. We're three and six now. Like. Just changes your whole season. Like, 100%. You nearly miss finals now, and you miss set shots. Heaney's done it two weeks in a row. He fucking owes this one, Heaney. Mate, he's, he's done he's, it two weeks in a row, missing set shots. He's had a slow start to the year. Yeah. Um, couple of odds. So, Gordon had 
37. He paid 20 to 21 to 1 for 35. I actually have a little fiver on that, which was nice. My check kick five. Got these ones screenshot on my phone, so just give me a sec and I'll uh I'll give you a couple of couple of odds. My check kicked five. He paid 16 to 1 for five. Who else? Papley only so Papley, Heaney, and Franklin are all down, aren't they? They're just not going that well. Papley hasn't kicked been in the two and fifteen club for three weeks in a row now. I'd hate to have to drop him out of that club. Hayden McLean, he was bloody great yesterday. One yeah. ball, nineteen touches. He had, <laughs> had a nice little, nice finish. Do you, do you remember our group chat? Yeah, and he replied. He, he joined it and said, "Love you, boys." I'm like, "You're kidding, Dosser. I was that pumped actually. <laughs> yeah, um, we had a group chat, and I decided to add him in the group chat because I'm friends with him on Facebook. The fact that he replied, he's like, "Cheers for coming, boys." Out of all Doss. Luke Parker had 34. He paid 4.10, and Pendlebury had. 31, he paid 6.25 for 30. If you had Pendlebury for 30 at 6.25, into Parker for 30, into Goulden for 30, that would have paid, I'll give you that, 6.25 times 4.30 for Parker, times 6.50 for Goulden. 174 to 1 for three players to get 30. Three midfielders. Fuck. That's fucking good. And then Florent, oh, Mills also had 30, Florent had 29, Warner 28. Jeez, we we knew what we were doing. They have a bad set shot kicking, cost you a game of footy. 100%. cost you finals. We've done it We've done it three times. We've got some demons. We've got the yips, the swans. And I'm just, I think it's going to have to be a write-off here. And we're going to, we might crawl into eighth, but you can't win the premiership from eighth. And then it's like, ah, uh, well, you know, you just kick yourself. Like, we're not good enough. It really looks like the league's separating itself, doesn't it? The top the teams, league. The middle, and then it's just fucking like we, we look shit. Yeah, well, I think we're better than Port Adelaide, but they beat us head to head. They keep winning free games. They'll win the finals. We won't be like fuck. It's a it's a ruthless, ruthless league. All right, last game. In the, I'm actually not sure. I have a feeling this game's a myth. I heard some stuff today that they should have stopped this game after halftime. That's apparently right. It was apparently it was the worst game in history. Unwatchable. I, I thought this was a halftime score. I thought they did. 64 to 34. That's the Matilda halftime score. in the warehouse win by 30 points over North Melbourne. 64 to 34. Apparently, this game was a stinker. Dan Butler kicked the first at 15. North didn't kick a goal in the first half, Jev. You can't be goalless at halftime. At the warehouse. They did not kick a goal. Like, St Kilda kicked eight goals, 16. Four goals, ten. They, they were talking about set shot kicking in this game as well. Apparently, easy, easy misses. What's going on? Oh, this so is- my man Cal Wilkie had twenty eight touches. I got a couple of texts from Saints supporters today about how good he was. He got the perfect ten coaches votes as well. He's Did a he? good football, especially at Marvel Stadium. What did he pay for twenty five, Dars? He played for twenty five. Sorry, I did have it here. He was, duh, 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 where was it? Twenty five. He was paying. Where is he? It says I can't even get him for twenty five. There you go. Oh yeah, two bucks, two bucks. And then yeah, so twenty five, two bucks. I want him for twenty in the hundred k at dollar seventy four, but didn't make it. So Zebel had thirty six. She's with thirty. She was twenty eight. N- Nyash Wanganine Malera, who is a very good player, hard name to say, 28. He hasn't gone under 15 once. He's a nice footballer, isn't he? 100%. And- the, my, the best bet in football, Jack Sinclair, 25 touches, went under. He only had 23, one goal in 23. Harry Sheasel for 30, Jeff. He's ninety, which is ridiculous. Nick Lark. Jeff, he's, he's shorter than Davies Uniac to get 30. And Simkin. Yeah, he's. they just love giving him the pill. Larky kicked three. The tip rat Higgins, he kicked two. Dan Butler kicked two. Mitch Owens, my boy, one goal, one and 16. Well, Zerha, zero goals, three and 20. We love the Prince of Marvel, but you got to be doing more than that. What are North going to do, Jeb? Uh, nah, they've got the players there. One more good, really good draft. And then they bring in Wardlaw, which will be like another draft pick. Let Georgie in, uncage him. They need a Ruckman, though, don't they? Like Todd Goldstein, this has got to be his last year. They had Cherry, but he's fucking done his knee. 
And then that Charlie Combin as well snapped his leg last week. There's three tall, well, two tall that are hurt, and Goldstein's just hanging on. Who was the worst player rated on the ground? On that ground? C. Lazaro. One disposal. Wow. <laughs> ben Cunnington got subbed off again, Das. Seven wow. touches he had. Wow. Like Paul Curtis, eight. Not good enough. Ben Cunnington's only getting seven touches at the warehouse. I know. Dougal Jeez. Howard had more than him. That's fucked. I'm so glad I didn't watch this game. Jaden Stevenson, one goal. <laughs> Mateus Philippou, Jeff, they must have had no other rookies that had a good game because he got it this week with 13 disposals, Not didn't even kick a goal. Yeah, took a nice mark though. you seen that mark he took? Oh, he's a fucking good player. That was, a really, that was an answer to Yeah, he's going to be a good player. Davies Uniac, 25. Good to be back in the 25 list. Jeez, he's... Not the same he was the first three weeks, Davies Uniac, is he? No, he wasn't. Now, Jeb, I've got a big question for you. So, what was the bank account sitting at after last night's escapades? <laughs> and how was your head this morning? Oh, why? What's that? What, what do you mean, which bank account? I just want to know, how much did you spend yesterday? Because we must have gone through a few beers because my <laughs> head is still thumping. What is going on with those taps at the MCG, Jeff? I had an MCC splitter this morning. Oh. So what we do at the footy is whoever's up, they just go by four, cover go up, we just bring back four until everyone drinks them, you go by four. So I know I bought three rounds. All five has bought three rounds of four. So that's 12 times five. What's that? That's 60 beers between five of us. No way we drank 60 beers at the G. Unless if Mano had 30 of them. He <laughs> drinks genuinely three. did. I've never seen anyone drink like him. He just kept turning around. It's like he was having shots. It was like they were water. I couldn't believe how fast he was drinking. He's so we had about two, three pints before at the home of the 100K, the London Tavern. We had at least, yeah, at least 48 to 60 beers. And then we had a couple of vodka sober ups at the corner after a couple of vodka pineapples. Yeah, and we did. I'm feeling good. Paul Morgs lost his phone and wallet. Oh, <laughs> We were having a bit of a bump, bump in the park on the way to the uh, corner and you elbowed me in the jaw, Morgs elbowed you in the jaw. I had my bell rung. I was in the air cold. My jaw is killing me. It was all good fun. Oh, I went up, I got, went to go buy a round of vodka, lemon, lime and bitters and then they put the number up. He's like, I'm like, is that for me? He's like, no, nah, that's the other guy. So I just walked off with the drinks <laughs> and then I said, boys, if the bartender comes over, just say that the guy left. He's like, who paid for these? I'm looking for the guy in the Swans jersey. He's like, oh, he just left. He's like, beautiful. Thanks, pal. <laughs> Thanks for the free drinks. <laughs> Pinch those. Uh, doing it all again this Saturday. We're going to Carlton Dogs. You, do, you don't even want to go now because you don't want Carlton to disappoint you, do you? I'm just going to start going to mutual games, I reckon, Jeb. I might actually – might wear a doggies jumper. <laughs> <laughs> wear an umpire scarf or something. Oh, oh, I'll go God. for Davey Roden. Davey, how big's your cock? <laughs> All right, we're going to go. I'm fucking bugging. I'm still dusty from yesterday. Back to work tomorrow. Good on you, Dave. Up well, 100K. See you Wednesday. Early lines. I, I would never – I don't even know what games are this week. I don't even know who the Swans are playing. We're playing Freo. Uh, yeah, 145 Freo because we're going to a pub to watch that before we go to Dogs Carlton. 145 at Marvel, you reckon? Uh, Morgs had gold last week. Loves golden in the warehouse. All right, see you, bloke. Up the pod. See you later, mate.